Пані та панове, 54-й день російського вторгнення і 9-й рік війни Російської Федерації проти України. Мене звати Андрій Шевченко і від імені команди. I thank all the journalists reporting our fight for freedom. Today we'll be following the situation with missile strikes on Lviv. Uh, the regional um, military administration and the mayor's office have confirmed several uh, rocket strikes within the city. Uh, there are people killed, injured, and at uh, uh, 12.30 we hope to have Maxim Kozitsky, the military, military governor of Lviv Oblast present, uh, uh, Just as uh, Andrei Sadovy, the mayor of the city, they will brief you on the consequences of the rocket strike. And now I would like to introduce Oles Sanin, that uh, you are a renowned Ukrainian uh, film director. This person has been representing uh, Ukrainian culture abroad. He is well known in Ukraine. And this is a person who is uh, happy to tell us about Uh, the situation of the Ukrainian culture during war times. So my first question would be about this morning in Lviv, when the city woke up from explosion. What are your emotions? The emotions uh, that, well, indeed, in Ukraine there hasn't been a single place without feeling the sensation that the war is here. First I was in Kiev. I m now must complete the editing, the post-production of the film called Dobush, and I'm essentially the only person who is crucial because I'm consolidating the efforts of the whole uh, group, of the whole team. Of course now the team is dispersed all over Ukraine. The girls with the Young and children are abroad, but they're still working, trying to help. Well, and this feeling, uh, of course, it's, um, I mean, the war has now been internalized, but we keep on working. And I think for anyone who is dealing with art, with cinema like me, it's important for us to be, uh, to, to, it's important for us to matter, to, uh, work alongside the others because you can't just close your eyes and say that this war is irrelevant uh, this is the reality and we'll have to live with it for a long time but let's talk about Dobush the film you've been working on it for quite a long time and I don't think you've expected that you would be completing this picture in such a dramatic situation so what is the current uh, status of the film it was supposed to in cinemas on May the 12th, but well, now we have to wait um, until victory. And now we are just finalizing the color correction and finalizing the sound uh, uh, recording, the last bits of the orchestra. Well, we had to uh, change the setting, we had to wreck it, because uh, the guys who did CGI for us were located in Mariupol. Uh, uh, but uh, now they uh, stay in Mario, uh, in in Mykolaiv and Kherson, and they still work there, and they still pass the footage, the edited footage to us. It's difficult even to comment this heroism, but we will finalize the film, and we have evacuated the sound design to Ivano Frankivsk and Lviv. So we have recorded uh, all the um, sound bites, all the tracks uh, by the actors. And one of the cinemas uh, provided uh, the uh, room for us, and we are finishing the, the color correction. Our colleagues from Canada and Poland are providing immense help, so I really appreciate the input of the Polish people, not only uh, for helping us, but overall for helping Ukraine. They indeed are um, the closest brothers of ours in this fight for freedom. So do you have a plan uh, for this film for the next months or years, or now it's not the time? No, we have to uh, do it. We have to show that we exist. Now there is a really strong uh, 
there is a really strong demand for this because we need to showcase with the Ukrainians our national character why we're fighting like this so the festivals are waiting for us and if in the nearest future the military situation will be stalled the cinemas would not reopen. We will start uh, this film. We'll open with it in the West and in Ukraine. Uh, we'll be showing it after victory. And I just want to remind you, for example, that the picture over there, the guide, has already been in cinemas in the US and Canada for two weeks. Uh, facilitated by the head of the Ukrainian cinema club, Yuri Shevchuk, and the uh, American um, uh, manager of several humanitarian organizations, Marshall Strauss, we have managed to organize uh, this film opening in uh, North America. First, we wanted to make only a few sessions to fundraise the Ukrainian army and the humanitarian needs for the refugees and the IDPs and so on. And this has been a success. And after that we decided to expand that. And now over 600 cinemas in North America uh, are showing this film. And all the revenues are coming to several charity foundations. We are also organizing uh, the demonstration of this film in Europe. And also, we've had a session in Turkey, and now in Italy, in Germany, in Poland, it's planned. And uh, requests are coming in from Australia, from Japan. So, the cinema goes on. And the Ukrainian films are interesting. And it is the ambassador of ours. Our cinema is the ambassador of peace. It really showcase why Ukrainians are the way they are. If there are any questions, please uh, show me your hand. I would like to get back to Dobrz. For international reporters, I would like to explain that Alexa Dobrz is um, a real uh, Ukrainian insurgent leader uh, who really is famous for his military victories. So, when you are now watching Ukrainians defending from the Russian invasion, and you see that Ukrainians are uh, showing that they are smart, they are brave, and they have this military honor, do you see a parallel uh, with Dobrz? I never wanted actually to uh, film anything about today. Because, it, you know, it feels like propaganda if you do something which is really relevant to today. The original idea for Dobush, you know, many people are asking, how did you come up with this idea? I remember this moment. It was actually Maidan, when I was there with the camera filming the events in Maidan. It was late January 2014. So... I saw this Berko Triad police who was heavily armed and they were assaulting and the clashes started and even the APCs were coming. And then I suddenly saw a boy who ran, then he stopped, uh, he uh, took off his jacket. So he was like uh, essentially half naked and then he took a stick. And he ran towards this riot police. And the riot police stopped and started retreating. There was uh, my friend, the cameraman, Michalchuk, next to me. And then I said, okay, I know what our next film is going to be. You know, it's a rare thing to have an insight like that. We just wanted to show the um, Ukrainian spirit. We wanted to show that it's not only something happening today. We've been fighting always, and the best of us have always been here uh, at the front line and moving ahead. Of course, nobody expected that this film is so relevant today. It will always be uh, relevant, of course, but I mean, now uh, some bits from the film already 
of their existing uh, on YouTube, and I've seen a few billboards with the quotations from this film. But well, it shows for me that uh, well, the artists are always relevant if they really feel uh, the people. It's very important to have faith in yourself and to know whom you uh, make the cinema for. The international cinematic community uh, re responded to support Ukraine, which was a surprise for many. Uh, so, did Ukraine did Ukraine touch some nerve in the international community? Well, in culture, we also have warfare. You know, we also have the front line in culture. Russia has been spending a lot of money and a lot of efforts to promote the Russian world and to tell the world about uh, how Ukrainians are immoral and helpless and anti-Semitic and whatnot. There have been different angles, uh, Russian special services are trying to bribe as many people as possible, trying to promote these ideas. Today, there's a lot of resistance, even at international festivals, resistance from people who are not ready to block neither the Russian movie nor the um, imperialistic ideas. Uh, sometimes they just are uh, supporting these ideas or they have been bribed. The Ukrainian community is trying to uh, oppose this, but now I think What's important is not just to protest, but to show with our creativity that we are capable, that we are strong, that we have high quality art and culture. So now we really have to make a lot of things uh, relevant again, things from Ukrainian history and culture to show that we are able and that uh, we can we, we can fight and we are part of this European civilization of freedom, civilization of independence and mutual respect. Cinema and war, what's the relationship between them? A very direct. Most uh, cameramen who have been working now are, are now at war, are trying to record what's happening. They work for international agencies. Also, many of them are now joining the army. So I know that, well, I mean, the reporters understand that it's not easy to film. Everybody wants to cover and they want to provide the information as soon as possible. But in the current world, in the current info field, we understand that for example, I am here and if I'm covering the bombing, I'm just helping the enemy. So the media are now end up in uh, this very tricky situation. So we have to understand that. We have to deal with this. We have to find some forms to deliver this information, which would uh, be useful. And it's difficult. Also, I'm supporting all the efforts of the artists who are trying to support the Ukrainians uh, who are singing at barricades or in occupied cities uh, who are recording or whatever they can uh, everyone who is doing um, who is applying efforts for our victory. Oles Sunning, a Ukrainian film 